Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my single acting hydraulic system, understanding it, and wiring diagram video. This is a 1600 pound lift gate on the back of this X snap on truck from 1999. So, this is a massive aluminum lift gate. When you work with hydraulics, you cannot play any games with this. Safety is always number one. This thing can mangle you, cut your hands off, crush you. Just always use caution, never work under it. But would you look at that? Everything for it is under the lift gate. This one has safety latches on both sides. So I was able to go into there and pull everything out. I had to get the motor out and the pump because I needed to check the fluid level. I didn't know how to do that. It's a little cap on top. The wiring was completely shot on it. I had to rip everything off. I have it rigged up right here so we can operate it. Kind of want to check that out before you go in deeper and start rewiring and cleaning everything up. So single acting means that the hydraulic fluid is only being compressed and pressured in one direction. Pay attention to that. The motor comes on when we go up, but it does not go on when we come down. There's a solenoid valve that's opening and the weight of the lift gate itself is pushing the fluid back through the line in reverse into the reservoir. Notice, you're gonna hear a click. Well, maybe it doesn't click. Single action means hydraulic fluid only in one direction. So I put fluid in there to make sure it wasn't empty. And notice what happens as we drop it. It's squishing the fluid out of the top. It has like some little rocks in there for a vent. And with the cylinder compressed 100%, this one's supposed to be 75% full if we had a dipstick to check that. But just letting you know, if you overfill it, going to squirt it out like that so if you're messing with something old for the first time notice how it's not on the ground 100 percent i'm going to leave it there for a few hours and see if it leaks itself down telling us that we have a bad leak or a very tiny leak who knows but look at that first thing we need to do is we need to clean this thing off 100 percent all right so they had this stuff at home depot let me just clean it up let's go draw some wiring diagrams all right, so this is not a test prep lecture course for engineering students or nothing like that. This is for DIY guys and girls. They're trying to figure this out. So first of all, let's figure out what the heck does single act pump mean anyway? Okay, we're gonna start off with the most confusing part of my system is the powered solenoid valve. So I apologize in advance. I have about an hour experience in hydraulics. I don't know if this is exactly how the valve looks, but you can imagine a little hole right there about the size of the hydraulic hose. And a solenoid has a coil in there. And whenever you run electricity in a coil like that, it magnetizes the center. This is grounded to the case. So when the solenoid is off, it looks like that. And if you can imagine the hydraulic hose right there. So remember on the pump, we had that purple wire coming out. And when you hit that with 12 volts, it's gonna energize this wire or coil magnetizing and then it's going to move the position of the switch in this case it's going to open it and now the hydraulic fluid can run through one way or the other just so you know no power to it it's going to be closed and when we energize the coil turning it on powering it it now is open i'm not 100 percent sure how this is on the pump and i'm not sure if there's two valves or one and if this opens with the motor running or not but this is just the idea sorry so anytime you work on stuff, you have to think of it as layers so you don't get confused. Let's explain the hydraulic part real quick. So we have the 12 volt motor attached to the single acting pump. So here's that little solenoid right here. Notice there's no power run to it and it's blocking the little passage for the hydraulic fluid. 
So this is your single acting pump, meaning that the fluid is being compressed, pressurizes, and can only go out in one direction, one direction only. And in this case, it goes to a hydraulic cylinder. So out there on the truck, you notice the hydraulic cylinder was almost fully extended. So whenever we turn that pump on, it only goes in one direction, it's pressurizing this line, and that fluid was going in there and filling up this side of the cylinder with hydraulic fluid. So the single act pump, when it turns on, can only pump in one direction out of that hydraulic hose and only on one side of the cylinder, and it can only extend the hydraulic cylinder, only. This 1600 pound lift gate is no longer in the locks, meaning that it is hovering in the air. And all of the weight of this is now being held up by these hydraulic hoses, lines, and the fluid in this cylinder, and possibly that little solenoid valve. So you can never in a million years be under that lift gate or anything, dump trailer, whatever it is, whenever it's pumped up and the cylinder is extended like that. There's probably a thousand hydraulic hoses and fittings that blow out every single day in the United States. And don't think for one second that that cannot happen to you. So if we only have a single acting pump that only pumps in one direction, how do we make this thing go back down? We need the hydraulic fluid to go on the other side of the cylinder, don't we? Not on a single acting pump. And so many people get confused and think they need a double acting pump when they don't. This lift gate right here weighs at least 500 pounds. And it is elevated off the ground right now and all the weight of that lift gate is on this cylinder, on the hydraulic hose, and on this system right now. So remember our little solenoid valve over here? All we have to do is energize it. And remember when we give power to it, it energizes, pulls it open, and now fluid can drain. So whenever we energize the solenoid valve, now we open that little valve and all this fluid that's being compressed by the weight of this gate now goes back this way into the reservoir. And that's how come whenever we push the down button, you don't hear the pump come on. You just hear kind of a That's the sound of all the fluid running back into the reservoir. So depending on the application, some of these cylinders on single acting will have a big heavy duty spring in there to help it go back in case this is a light load for some reason. The hydraulic cylinder in this application, that lift gate is so heavy and massive, it does not need that spring to help it in any way. So that's one hour experience in hydraulics in real life. I hope I did a good job explaining it. Feel free to correct me on whatever you want in the comments about the hydraulic part. So I apologize in advance because the colors we're gonna be using for these wires can be all screwed up. I am so sorry, but I promise you study it, wire it like this and it'll work 100%. Okay, so this is a 12 volt motor, just like the starter motor on your car or truck. And when we bench tested it at first, we had it bypassed to a battery. So understand there is no ground wire run to the motor. It's grounded to the aluminum body and then the chassis to the vehicle or whatever. But in the video, I had it grounded. This is gonna help you understand it. I think you should go ahead and bench test it like I did because you wanna make sure the wires are good and you're getting a good connection because that stuff in there was so old. I did not want to take any chances. I've wasted many hours in my life trying to mess with old stuff only to find out that it was a wire the whole time. So this is normally grounded to chassis, but we're running to negative side of the battery. Okay, so this uses a very simple relay that's been used on starter motors for over a hundred years. And all it is, is an old style relay. Keep in mind that this solenoid has to be grounded 100% or it will not work. In the video, I had a little jumper wire going back to the negative side of the battery. You have to ground it or nothing will happen. So then you'll have two big lugs on there. I'm not sure if they're marked, but it really doesn't matter. And then you're gonna have a little wire for S. So you have a solenoid valve and then you have a starter solenoid. That right there is confusing. So this is all heavy duty stuff and you have to run a big fat cable. It's recommended zero gauge. I think it has two on there as long as it's a noticeably fat cable. So it has two wire gauge on there. When you're testing it, you feel the wires. If they get hot, if that insulation starts getting squishy on there, you need to go bigger wires. But these number two wires worked 100% today. So the red wire out there on the lift gate was black. That's why you have to understand where everything goes in case they use black wire. We will show how to check this in real life with the multimeter but my control box is an up and down with three wires in it black white and green so the two button 
is a single pole double throw switch. Mine has three wires, black, white, and green coming out. You can even use a little tiny toggle switch from the auto parts store. You don't have to have a heavy duty switch for this. So I'm apologizing to you and again for these colors. This wire from the battery going to power the single pole double throw, that's where you wire the single pole, is blue. So mine had the blue wire running to a little junction box looking thing. I'm guessing it's some kind of resistor that if you actually bump the control, it doesn't go mirror, mirror, mirror. It kind of makes you pull the button down so it doesn't jerk the motor in case you accidentally push it. That's what I think it is. Please comment and let me know what it really is. Could just be a little junction wiring box, but blue going in and blue came out and green is our power wire on this particular pump setup. All right, I'll make these wiring diagrams for people to screenshot. Let me make this a lighter blue. Screwing on my whole thing. It's summer in Houston, Texas. It's hot, I'm sorry. So on my little control box, the up was the white wire. So when we want this motor to go up and pump up, we're gonna wire the white wire to the S position and we are gonna change it to a white wire. And these are just small 18 gauge wires. And on my switch down was the black wire. So whenever we go down, we're not turning the motor on at all. We're opening that solenoid valve. And remember we had to energize it. So this is gonna send power to the purple wire and open it up and let everything go down. So I am not super proud of this wiring diagram because the colors are all screwed up. But I promise you, if you sit down and study this, you'll be able to figure out how to wire yours up. Let's go out there and do it in real life. So I went in and took the cables off, cleaned them up real good. This is zero gauge, real heavy duty fat cable. Okay, so this is the solenoid wire. It's very delicate. I would go ahead and strap it down so you can't accidentally pull it off. So the wire to the plug is gonna come in right here. So we need to make everything reach. And you see how it's all screwed up? We're gonna extend this purple solenoid valve wire over here. Repair and remove anything that looks like this. All this is trash. We have the solenoid all cleaned up. We can go ahead and attach the main power wire going to the motor. So then we're going to hook up the cable that goes back to the positive side of the battery. Now when you go through metal like this, you have to use a grommet. We still have to clean that up. We're just doing this for the video. So the main wire coming back from the battery is hot all the time. So this is where we're going to get power for our controller. And this one has this weird thing. I don't know if that's a safety device. If you bump the button, it doesn't automatically turn the motor on. In other words, you have to hold it down or push it like a resistor or something but it did not have any resistance going through it but i've seen this on controls somebody please let me know what that does or what it is but we're going to connect that wire straight from the battery right here okay, don't feel bad if you don't have any of these covers it's not going to hurt anything to not have them we're going to go in and repair the blue wire So this wire right here is the one that's gonna connect the solenoid to start the motor. And on my switch, it's white. So I'm gonna wire mine white. So we have our three wires ready and repaired. Went ahead and fixed the plug on there. So we can have all that connected. Then from the plug, back to over here I ran this super heavy duty 12 gauge this was a heavy duty extension cord that got damaged so it's all in really good shape but we have our three number 12 wires this is super overkill but perfectly fine to use I just used it for the insulation so it doesn't get damaged and heated like the old one did so this switch when wired correctly is a single pole double throw meaning that one of these wires is gonna be hot all the time and it's either sending power to up or down. So one wire is hot, on this one it's green. It's either gonna send power to black or white. On this one, white should be up. Let's just go through it and check it out. We got a multimeter on continuity right there, the diode. 
All right, so green is our single pole, power coming in, and our double throw, one of them is up. So that's going to lift our gate, energizing the starter solenoid. Single pole, the second of the double throw is down. Remember, this one energizes the solenoid valve. So we've identified our wires 100%. We're just gonna wire them up out here because I still gotta clean this all up, having problems with the existing battery cables in the vehicle. So pay attention to the wire diagram. We figured out our switch colors. So if this is single pole, this is hot from the battery. This is our blue wire, straight from the battery. All right, so this is just temporary for the video. Calm down. All you weird freaks out there. You get you the screen door. Calm down there. All this still has to be cut down. This is all going to be properly done. This is going to be permanent when I'm finished. So white was up. This is going to energize the starter solenoid. So white to white. That's why we wired it white. And somebody that was skipping through the video is going, You can't do that. You can't put wire nuts on automotive. So then down is going to energize our solenoid valve. So that's connected to our purple. All right. Somebody skipping through the video to this point is going to leave a comment saying, You never use wire nuts on automotive. Dude, shut up. So it is wired up exactly like the wiring diagram. We're still having a connected to a battery under there because these freaking cables right here, they are all screwed up in the vehicle. I have no idea what's going on. Cleaned that up yesterday, so it's leaking somewhere. So this lift gate, it actually guides itself into the locks. I didn't even have to make it do that. After you have it locked, put your little safety pin in there. I'm probably gonna put one of these on the other side too. So I finally got that thing working. I'm so happy. I got a lean to and I have a little garage. I gotta put all my tools in there. And you can see this house right here. Hopefully in the next couple of months, this thing will look like the front of the house. I already have all the siding, everything ready. I had to put my windows in. I still got to put those windows in. I have no freaking idea how I'm going to get all the way up there. Those freaking windows are expensive and they are heavy. And I believe those lift gates like that, if you go try to buy one, they're about five, six, seven thousand $7,000. Please somebody let me know how much those really are. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.